Good to have you with us. I'm Gareth Edwards. And the question is, is our guest bringing some warmth today? Are we hearing maybe some exclusive news mm. that uh, the bond that you are paying for right now might be a thousand rand lower or not? I'm hoping. Oh, I need to wish, try. Oh, this is why I love you. It's I, the know, wishful it's thinking. The <laughs> it's the wishful thinking. I'm afraid, I'm afraid not. I so, to try. For most of the hour, we're going to have the Reserve Bank Governor with us for just a couple mm. of minutes now and then throughout the show as well. We do that, of course, in case you're wondering, there he is, uh, Lesecha Kanyako. We do that, of course, to let people get some questions in as well. Right. Instead of just rambling through for a whole hour. So uh, the Governor will be with us for now for a couple of minutes then uh, throughout the hour as well. And it's such a pleasure as well. Such a pleasure. Uh, to welcome the Governor, isn't it, Tums? It is, it is. Good morning, morning. Morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. I'm worried about you because you should be jet-lagged. Surely you've been travelling fresh off the plane onto ENCA? Well, that's why I'm awake. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate the sacrifice, but you were travelling recently, Governor. Your trip to Washington, I mean, what were you there to do? How was it? Well, I did uh, New York and Washington. Mm. Um, uh, New York, mainly talking to uh, investors. Um, uh, there was a memorandum of understanding that was signed between the Johannesburg Stock Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange. And uh, there are South African companies that are also listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And we're talking to um, uh, portfolio managers who have got an exposure in, uh, uh, in South Africa. I mm. uh, hear what their concerns are and uh, reassuring them. And then I proceeded to Washington to attend the G20 uh, meetings and the IMF uh, uh, meetings and did uh, a lot of other investor meetings there as well. So when you mm. talk to these overseas investors and, and you need to explain what is happening in South Africa, what kind of questions are they asking you? They say, oh, Mr. Konyako, good to have you with us, lovely mm. to have you in New York. What is happening in your country? What's the toughest question you got asked? Is it the grey listing? Is it inflation? Is it the blackouts? Where do we start? Well, at the moment, everyone is concerned about the state of the global economy uh, and how uh, various countries are going to navigate that. Uh, the topmost, topmost, uh, whether you were in New York or in Washington, it had to do with uh, uh, inflation. And um, normally when you are faced with a challenge of inflation, you say you find that you have got inflation and maybe the economy is hot and then you've got to slow down the economy. And what we have now is in central banking terms what we call a policy dilemma. Uh, you have got rising inflation and you have got growth that is uh, uh, slowing down. And, well, of course, economies, we complicate this, we call it stagflation. Um, and that is what the global economy uh, is facing. And then the question then that comes is, okay, we know the state of the global economy. Mm. Uh, how is your economy performing relative to the uh, to the rest of, uh, uh, of the economy, of, mm. of the global economy. And um, that is where they would want assurance that you are staying the course mm. uh, in, term, in terms of policy. Uh, we because... have a couple of speed bumps yeah. on our course, though, because uh, there was an expectation that even if compared to other developing countries, mm. our growth forecast, I think it was just over 1%, 1.1% versus even other countries of similar economy. How do you try and buffer that up? How do you make that look good for international investors? Well, the, the thing when you talk to international investors, you must know that they have the numbers. Mm. So, right. So you can't spin. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, uh, you They're not asking to find out. They're asking because they know. <laughs> yes. <what laughs> yes. yes. So, so you can't spin. You've got to let the facts uh, speak uh, for themselves. And basically what we're saying is uh, South Africa is less bad than the others. It's <laughs> not that we are doing spectacularly uh, uh, well. Uh, and part of it had been that we had been cushioned by the rise in commodity prices during the course of the last part of 2020 and during the course of 2021. And early this year, although the commodity prices slowed down, mm. uh, they, remained, uh, they, remained, uh, they remained elevated. And the question was whether we have been able to take full advantage uh, of the commodity price cycle. And the answer is not quite. We didn't take fully advantage fully of, uh, uh, of it. Uh, we have not quite been able to move the bulk commodities to the extent that uh, uh, the global economy was demanding those bulk commodities. And that meant that uh, in the process uh, we lose uh, uh, foreign exchange uh, revenue, but also the fiscals uh, mm -hmm. loses, uh, uh, loses tax revenue. And so that had sort of like uh, cushioned, uh, uh, cushioned us, and that is what led 
uh, to that spectacular recovery uh, uh, last year. But uh, this year, in the first quarter of this year, the economy went back to the level where it was in 2019 after mm. the big contraction uh, in 2020. But by the second quarter of this year, after the floods in uh, KZN, mm. uh, we slipped. Yeah. Mm. Um, once again. We slipped uh, uh, once again. Um, uh, so, so the global economy is, uh, is a tough place uh, uh, at the moment. Governor, with that being said, does it, does it make your, your job difficult to South South Africa? Not globally. That, not that my job has been any easier. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a tough job, um, uh, but there were things that uh, we were able to point out that distinguished South Africa uh, from the pack, which, I'd, as I had said, we looked less bad uh, uh, than uh, uh, than the others. Amongst those were that. Um, uh, inflation is rising uh, uh, around the world. Um, central banks are playing catch up to try and tame, uh, and tame inflation. Um, uh, we might have got the timing right because we started uh, uh, taking action on, inf on the inflation front in November uh, last year. Um, and what that meant was that uh, for a period of 15 months, our inflation was below that of the United States of America. And so, so we didn't have to move as aggressively as we have seen, mm. for example, the other countries uh, having to, uh, mainly in Latin America. I mean, Latin American countries started tightening uh, policy last year. I mean, in Brazil, mm. uh, policy rate was tightened by 850 basis points Ooh. since uh, March uh, 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 last year. We have only really moved 275 <laughs> Uh, basis points. Uh, but the reason we were able to move 275 basis points was because we had contained inflation so well uh, during uh, 2020 and during 2021. Uh, 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 so for those countries that are experiencing very high inflation, their central banks are having to respond very um, uh, aggressively mm -hmm. uh, to try and tame, uh, uh, and tame inflation. And, um, uh, and, and that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that is where we are. Uh, in central banking, mm. it's, uh, it's, it's tough. And you are also faced with a situation where across the globe, you are having a generation that had only known low inflation. And so any inkling that inflation is rising, mm. um, uh, people are up in arms. Um, uh, the population, the public is now um, intolerant of, uh, uh, of inflation because it erodes, it erodes the... Right, by it does. Yeah. It does erode. It erodes the very... Uh, little money that many people have in the mm, country, mm. Governor, and I'm sure that uh, you, you know this more than anybody. We're going to talk about some of the reaction to inflation because mm. while we do want to talk about the high-level world of business and the economy as well, we also, when we come back in a couple of minutes, going to just bring it back down for most people watching this and their concerns, as Tums and I were uh, seeing with Rapiwa earlier, yeah. uh, it's house bonds, it's uh, salaries not mm. going up, it's food baskets going up, but salaries aren't, for example. And, of course, we're going to talk about yeah. the stage four blackouts. So we're going to have the good Governor with us uh, this morning, I can mm. see all your tweets coming through uh, as well. Tanda Kolo, uh, Grant Blankenberg, I'm getting all the tweets here. Yeah. You can uh, tweet me. You can tweet. It's at Gareth Edwards SA. Money Man H also got some questions for the governor. Uh, you can keep mm. them coming in. I'll try and squeeze them in uh, in the next couple of minutes as uh, we have Lesetja Kanyaho, Reserve Bank Governor, uh, staying with us throughout this morning.